Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter is your basic Sorgonomics here, and uh, we are rocking and rolling this week. Wow, to get all the all the all the standard stuff out of the way, I guess. Uh, but anyways, uh, so it's been a, a big week so far. Uh, big things coming up as usual uh, with uh, podcast day. We're back to the pro wrestling thing as long as snow doesn't drop in our laps yet again. And uh, having a good time. And uh, a lot of things I'm, I'm thinking about uh, visiting the recent uh, Unstuck Pittsburgh Monday meetups um, for entrepreneurs. Uh, kind of kind of trying to get out of the spots that they're in. You know, if you're, entre- you're an entrepreneur, sometimes you don't know where to go, where to get started, um, or the next step. And it's really good to go check out uh, Kit Muller and the crew down there. And uh, that was the second time I've had, had the opportunity to um, check them out. But... Uh, but no, it's a really good time, and and, and again, kind of gets the wheels turning. Not specifically what we talked about this week uh, down there, but uh, I I I definitely been thinking about scalability, you know. And uh, this is something that isn't new, um, you know. When you're listening to the whole startup mentality and entrepreneur podcasts and blogs and whatever the case may be, I mean that's one thing that comes up is is uh, scalability. Uh, how do I make this company bigger than just me? And up until you know recently, I had kind of been more or less a glorified uh, a freelancer. It's just me, and and I do things, and and we get the next gig, and we get going, right? But you want to have the opportunity to make the company, you know, kind of bigger than that, and and see where those opportunities lie. For uh, for me, it's kind of tough because a lot of stuff I do is you know right here, you know, in the studio, um, you know, uh, uh, just just sitting in front of Mike doing it. There's not much you can scale out from there other than growing an audience and, and that kind of, uh, uh, I guess that, that kind of exponentially grows and you can, you can do that. But then if you're doing, um, on location shoots, uh, and this is from a discussion, uh, my wife is actually listening to the wonderful quit podcast. I was like, somebody's doing exactly what you did. I'm like, what? <laughs> As in they they were working for a company and decided they want to go on their own and they're doing, you know, shoots with interviews with people and, you know, for marketing videos or whatever the case may be. And that's a lot of what we do, too, are these one-offs of, um, uh, you know, live streaming or, you know, we're doing with Work Hard Pittsburgh. Actually going to go set one up here today as we're, we're recording. And, uh, and and there's only one me, unfortunately. Um, and, and, and they talk about, you know, the, there's the physical limitations. And I think I think that's I think that's unfortunately... You know, that's true, but, you know, we're talking about a world where, you know, we make an app and a bunch of people can use it, right? Um, I think I think it's thinking backwards on something like this. Um, it, and it depends on what part of the model is. Only part of the model that we have is doing these business services. And even as far as these business services that we are trying to do, um, we are looking at having more, you know, videographers, uh, more immediately, probably more people helping with, you know, the social media work, you know, it, 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 while, while myself and my partners are the experts, you know, we can kind of distribute that and kind of work it into hopefully like an agency sort of model. And, uh, you know, if it's just you with a camera, yeah, it's not terribly scalable unless you, you're, you're making something for a large audience that, that will grow and, and, and you can do that. Uh, it's hard to scale uh, uh, if you're manufacturing, for instance. I think I think part of the conversation that got hung up on is is everybody thinks software, everybody thinks that you know it's hard to scale your. Uh, if you guys watch Shark Tank, you see this as well. Um, you know, there's uh, people that come in there that we make these uh, cupcakes, we make these jars of peanut butter. How do you scale that up? It's mostly you guys making it by hand in the kitchen and bottling it yourself. And then when you get that order from a Walmart that says we want, you know, 100,000 of these things, you're dead in the water. You know, what's the next step? And that leap is uh, usually where it's a lot harder. And especially in something like that, where is a physical uh, thing that you that you, you know, put together? Um, it's a it's really curious. It's a really interesting thing to think about uh, if you're if you're looking to do your own business, if you're looking to start your own business, you know, you got to think, well, what, what can I get to? Um there's a lot of equations out there for what do I need to make in order to have X quality of life? So you, you backtrack that and you charge charge more, you know, um, uh, based on that. 
and see what the market can bear basically. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, you know, always kind of readjusting that as well. But, uh, but again, you're, you're only one person doing that one thing. And unfortunately, you know, if you are that one person and something happens to you, there goes all your business. Um, because you were the person handling all the things. And I've seen that too. And I've seen, uh, in companies where even if it's a small company, um, everything is so segmented down to the people involved that one person disappears and that kind of hurts the entire infrastructure. There's no um, redundancy. There's no backups. And, uh, and, and you kind of see why things are so large as they are in, in, in the corporate world. Um, but also in the meantime, you're also, you know, trying to uh, build something build something you know decent and it's kind of you know i've talked about before it's kind of hard to uh land certain parts of your business to other people you know again mostly talking about you know kind of the physical i need to be there and be the person um you know working on this for instance um i i've I've certainly been hired on a lot of uh projects where uh i've been told very very directly say we like the work that you do on video whether that be live streaming, whether that be editing, we like the work that you do. And we want you to do this thing here. As I start bringing in other videographers and I'm not maybe the core switcher on something like this, I mean, I was actually just kind of considering the other day uh, with resources we have, we could more effectively uh, take care of these um, double book shows, for instance, and do a full setup um, with, with what we have. And do the old system, do the new system. We have uh, resources to do a third system uh, for for live switching if the case may uh, come up, for instance. Um, but again, it's also training the people on them. And if a person sits there and live switches these things, um, they're not me with all the experience, and they're not what the people expect when uh, when they are when you know what people expect when they they pop in the DVD or get the digital download. Mostly the digital download these days. So how do you how do you replace that you factor? At a certain point, you do have to give that up. At a certain point, you do have to train new people, at least in your techniques. And uh, then you run into the problem, like you know, I hear discussed a lot of uh, uh, that person is never <laughs> the person that you hire is never going to be as passionate and as detail oriented as you are. Maybe not that last part um, because it's not their business. And uh, that's also kind of a hard pill to swallow sometimes uh, when you're the business owner as well. But that's the kind of stuff you have to deal with. And that's kind of um, a percentage you have to give up in, toward, in order to grow overall. And I think we work with a, a really good group of people um, for the most part on our, on our wrestling shows and, and other video projects that, uh, you know, the, the confidence is definitely building on that. And um, I'm, loving, I'm loving the idea of being able to toss them um, other other content here in the coming weeks uh hopefully as, as uh these projects come through and some of these this stuff starts building hey there's gonna be a certain point where i'm not gonna be able to do everything in the company and uh and and we're fast approaching that and that's very very exciting and as always scary but what do i always say on this show if uh if i'm afraid of taking that step then i i make a conscious choice to uh run straight forward towards it because if i'm if i'm afraid of moving in a direction that probably means that's a that's a that's a direction for my company of growth, and I'm afraid of the change and potential failure if we if we head that way. Um, a lot of my general philosophies. So um, let me know what you think at Sorgatron on Twitter. Please go sign up for the newsletter. I talked about chaos Muppets, chaos Muppets on the newsletter this week. Sorgatron.com, Sorgatronmedia.com. You can uh, sign up for it at either of those locations. And uh, it's going to be a very exciting. If you're into the pro wrestling, uh, we got some really cool interviews going on. If you join us, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, starting about 8 p.m. on this Tuesday night, if you're catching this day of. And, and we got so much, so much going on. So much fun. So much happening. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.